I opened a workshop at Westfield. When people were passing, they said, see, look at this boy. He came from Europe and said he's going to be a carpenter here. <laughs> <laughs> when they have a problem at the state house, they have called me, I went there and changed all the roof of the security. But he said to me one day, I'm not so good in trying, but I want this. I said to him, I know what you want. Just I'll go and draw and bring you the picture. Tough Pinto School, he specialized in construction. And he was a carpenter as me. Tough then as a carpenter from his uncle. The president normally tell them, call her and give it a week because we need it in the next two months. And he's the only guy who can do it. And I spent four months here. I went back to Belgium. I was in Belgium. So yes, you can just come back here. At that time, if you have money, you can just buy Yeah, it. because, yes, yes, there's no visa at that time. But also, when you go there, you will not get work until when you marry. The only thing you can stay there, that's when you have to make a political assignment. They said to me, you have to make political assignment. I said, no. What political asylum? I didn't have government, I didn't have problem with the government. How can I become a liar? The one I said, Mr. 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 President, I will never lie to you. I'll never do a bad job for you. And I always, whatever I said, I did. Sometimes when they go for a meeting with the ministers and so on, he do said, uh, a contractor in the Gambia. When he said five o'clock, he mean five o'clock, Omar Malak. That's what, that's what you are. Yes, now we are Federation of Gambian Capitalists. I'm the Vice President. Government, they are giving a budget for almost $75 million every year on furniture. We say to them, you have a skillful capitalist. Let them give us 30%. And see, if they give us 30%, the Federation of Gambian Capitalists, we have 30%. From that, they see what we can do. For them to go. Yeah, it's for them. But your the aims were not to, to stay in Europe, but to at least have something. Yes. And come back. Yes. Not to stay. Because people are coming semester, boom, 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 vehicle. I say, I have to go and have a look. <laughs> see, what, <laughs> see what happened. So when I saw what is happening there, I said, no, this is not where of my life. I'll go back, whether I will not have anything or I will have, I must make it in Gambia. Meet Alaji Omar Malak a master carpenter hailing from Serekunda, now calling Wellingara home. With a career spanning over four decades, Omar has built an impressive portfolio of achievements that have left an incredible mark on the Gambia's landscape. These are the Mansa Congo deputy governor's resident. I did it, this one. MBI, you find these chairs. I manufactured these chairs, almost about 800 chairs, this one. So this is in Brufoot this house. And this is a Kololi Beach Hotel. Omar's journey began in 1976 when he joined the renowned construction firm Balfour Betty. He played a role in erecting the first abattoir in Abuko at the first hotel school in the Gambia. The two major landscapes that continue to serve Gambian people till today. This is for WAEC examination, examination council. Why? These are bookshelves for government, for judiciary. Yeah, for the new complex courthouse in Bundu. But Omar's passion for carpentry and construction didn't stop here. Omar soon joined Afro Atlantic, a Spanish company that's to construct the Banjul International Airport. Omar also worked at the construction of the iconic Trust Bank building in Banjul, using his skill to mark valuable contribution to the success of the project. Omar has become a favorite contractor to the presidency, where he continued to apply his trade with excellence and distinction. Prepare to be inspired as you hear from Al Haji Omar Malak about his incredible journey from the Gambia to Libya and Europe, as well as the secrets of his success as a master carpenter. Through this interview, Omar shared valuable insights and lessons learned from his four decade experience in the industry. Sit and relax to hear more about his incredible story and learn from the Gambia's most accomplished craftsmen. I was there with Taf, Taf Consorts, and I worked with Taf at that time. Okay. At the time. Okay. And then. Which year was that? Uh, 81. That was, Nine, that was 1981. We went to work, and then they said that was a coup d'etat. Okay. They said, let us go home. Go home. So, yes. When we finished. Uh, 
Banjul at Trust Bank. They moved me to Yundum at the works. At the time, our boss called Tapia. Okay, okay. He's a Spanish guy. Two years, they said, and Tapia, the contract is finished. And by then, I was young. I didn't even have a wife. Okay. <laughs> and Tapia told them, this boy will handle the workshop. He said, this small boy? He said, yes, he can handle the workshop. So they terminated his contract and he went and they leave workshop with me. I handled workshop for another three years. Okay. At that time, you are very young. I'm, I'm young. I'm, I'm the youngest. Okay. Sometimes if I give them work, they look at me and they said, I said, look, it's not me. It's the boss give the instruction to do the work. Okay. So if you cannot do, then you go home because it's not me. <laughs> so finally, they accepted me because, you know, my knowledge. The knowledge is there. Yeah. So that's how we continue. And I worked there for three years and I leave the job. Okay. Okay. When I said I'm going to leave the job, the white man called me, our boss called me in the office. By then my mind wanted to travel. I want to travel. Anyway. travel okay. And I said, my father has a garden okay. and my father is old. Okay. Now I want to go and work with my people at the garden. That's the plan I did. Okay. By then I built a cupboard. I sold that cupboard $850. I changed it to Sefa. Okay. Uh, Sefa, when I changed it, I got Sefa um, sanded. That is hundred thousand. Okay, that's what I got. Okay, then and they pay me that last month salary. Okay, I added there. I changed all when I get. That's what I got. Uh, Sunday, which is hundred thousand. Okay, okay, and I decided to go. Alhaji Omar Malak's journey began when he left Banjul for Bara, then traveled to Dakar, and finally arrived in Mali after a three-day journey. Unfortunately, the road was full of danger and Omar was involved in a car accident that claimed the lives of some of his travel companions. But Omar was determined to continue his journey. Despite facing financial difficulties, Omar's skill as a carpenter proved to be his saving grace as he used them to earn money along the way. His perseverance finally paid off when he made it to Libya where he landed a job as a carpenter, a trade he had honed over the years. Omar worked hard in Libya for a year and a half, honing his skill and gaining valuable experience. But his journey is far from over. Watch this video up to the end as Omar shares his incredible story and challenges he overcome to achieve his dreams. So I was there for one year, six months, mm -hmm. and I, I left the job. I said I'm going back, coming back home. I cannot cope with the system. In the running, hiding there and there. So you stayed in Libya for? For one year, six one months. One year, six months. Yes. Work, work. As a commander. Yes. So after I went and asked for a ticket, I said, because if I come to the Gambia, my money might be finished, I'll not go back. Okay. So I went and asked for one year ticket. That my intention to go to Europe. Okay. Yes. So uh, they said, okay, it's possible. You can buy. I buy a ticket for one year. One ticket from Sabaha to Tripoli, Tripoli to Madrid. I spent three days in Madrid. I came to Dakar, that ticket finished. The second ticket is from Dakar, Brussels, Amsterdam. That's making one year ticket. So I came, I spent four months here. I bought that land where I am. Okay. I make it, I, I build it until I finish, but I didn't put the roof on top. With that, with that one year money in Libya? Yes. I bought the land, I make the block, I constructed <laughs> until I finished the construction. And then I left with 400 US dollars. I went and okay my ticket from here in Banyul. So, so, so Libya became Europe for you then? Yes, that's where I started then. <laughs> because we are able to come back here, buy a land mm. and, and build it for yourself mm. and have at least Four hundred dollars in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, when but you, back. you know why that helped me because the skill I have. The skill, because of the skill. We we work for two and a half, two months, yeah. and we said to the guy, we are not working for salary anymore. We are working for contract. If we bring the contract, we charge him, and we do the job. When he finishes, we charge him another one, and the job is just closer. After this one, this one is here. In fact, they will just make a line. After this guy is this guy. After this is guy this guy. So this is why we make money quick, because we are working in contract, contract. not salary. Salary, and it's also a skill that they need. Your yeah, of course, yes, because they don't have that skill there. This is why when I said I'm, 
I'm coming home. The man was crying. Let me not come. Salam. This is why I came and I spent four months here. I went back to Belgium. I was in Belgium. So just, you can just come back here. At that time, if you have money, you can just buy yeah, it. Because, yes, yes, there's no visa at that time. There was no visa at that time. You just buy your ticket, you go, they give you three months entrance. Within that three months, you see how you're going to set up yourself. So that's how easy it was to go to Europe at the time? Yes, at that time. But also when you go there, you will not get work until when you marry. The only thing you can stay there, that's when you have to make a political asylum. But going there is not a problem? No, no, no. And political asylum was a very tough to me because I've never heard about it. I've never experienced it. They said to me, you have to make political asylum. I said, no. What political asylum? Me, I didn't have government. I didn't have a problem with the government. How can I become a liar? <laughs> they said, look, all of, all of the boys you are seeing here, they make political asylum. This is why they stay here. If you don't do it, you will not stay here. Because they must give you a house to pay you a small token. And then you say. So you see how to work that. That's, that's, okay. that's how you end up in Europe. Yes, that's how I end up doing in Belgium for six months. And I travel to Germany. Germany. Germany also. The same thing. You have to make political sound. They will pay you 400 mark a month. You know, so that you see how you manage. That's how I manage. And I got my two small machines. I said, no, I have to go back. Two small machines? So yes. A woodworking machine. The one for planing and the one for cutting. So when I got that, I said, one of the night when we eat, get a dinner already, I said to my guys, may I'm going tomorrow. Where? I said, back to them. They said, you are sick, man. Are you well? I said, I'm well. Why? What is in the gun? You know, that time boys normally sell drugs. When they came here with two, three, four cars, semester, semester, moon, the music, boom, 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 boom. Me, I, I'm not used to that. I don't like that. I said, I'm going. They thought I'm sick. I said, no. I came. When I came with those machines I sent, I opened a workshop at the next week. When people were passing, they said, see, look at this boy. He came from Europe and said he's going to be a carpenter here. <laughs> <laughs> he lived here up and be here. He said, carpentry. So I started working in 1988. You understand? So I'm doing small, small, small job. In fact, finally I discovered, I said, I have to send my machine, sell the machine and go back. But sometimes they say, no, I think let's try. It will work. It will work. Yes. So that's how I try until I started working. The government start, you know, giving me work. And then I start coming up, coming up. You know, the construction, I did it, as I said, mm -hmm. with Taf and the others. Okay. So when I started the carpentry, carpentry, I ventured into the construction. construction. So construction, rehabilitation project, giving me work and all this. So that's how I became. But do you all with all that, you must be a truthful man. You must be truthful man and honest. Whatever you agreed with a person, I'm, I'm going to do this for you and he gave you money, make sure you do it. You will be su successful. If you don't do that, that's how I came and I established, I started working. But I help a lot of people when I'm here. I send a lot of people in Europe for them, but your aims were not to, to stay in Europe, but to at least have something. Yes, yes, not to stay. Because people are coming semester, boom, 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 vehicle. I say, I have to go and have to look. <laughs> see, <laughs> see what happened. So when I saw what is happening there, I said, no, this is not the way of my life. That's not the way you No, and no, no, this is not the way I want. Definitely. I'll go back, whether I'll not have anything or I'll have I must make it in the government. But, but How is your relationship with the government? Well, um, I started with Jawara and have a little contact with them. And they just start a few, uh, few months and then Jame came over into power. When Jame came into power, they involved me on this uh, contracts. Contract. Yeah, because when they have a problem at the state house, they called me, I went there and changed all the roof of the security. That's where Yame saw me. Saw your work. Yeah, he saw my work <laughs> and then he began to call me. Sometimes he do call me, I sat with him. When I sat with him, he said, Mr. Malak, I want this, I want this, I want this. I said, okay. But he said to me one day, Mr. Malak, I'm not so good in drawing, but I want this. I said to him, 
I know what you want. Just I'll go and draw and bring the bill to me. So I came, I did, uh, I draw it, I give it to someone, not to myself. I give it to someone, I explain to him. He, he draw it and then I give the costume together, I give it to him. Then he gave me work. That's how we begin to know me. No. And he always give me work. He always give me work. Because he support Gambians. He, yeah. he support Gambians. Yeah. He support Gambians, definitely. Yeah. That yeah. is in his habit. He support Gambians. And also he wants a man with the truth. If you are talking with him, he'll just look at you, but he's recording. <laughs> what you say to him, the next day, he'll ask you, this, what, this and this, that's what you say, say to me. Okay. But for me, the one I said, Mr. 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 President, mm -hmm. I will never lie to you. Mm -hmm. I'll never do a bad job for you. And I always, whatever I said, I mean. I mean it. And he kept that. Sometimes when we sit and then he starts talking about job affairs, he really know what I said yesterday. That's what I'm saying today. And sometimes when they go for a meeting with the ministers and so on, he do said, uh, a contractor in the Gambia, when he said five o'clock, he meant five o'clock Omar Malak. Because that's what, that's what you are. Yes. He said Omar Malak, when he said to you five o'clock, he meant five o'clock is Omar Malak. That's why sometimes he do call and say, you know they took me at the Jani Commission to ask me about political news. They asked me about the uh, uh, Manso Congo governor's president, because deputy governor. Yeah. That, 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 that's your... Yeah. Yes, that's how I did that for those projects. Okay. But they call me and say, go and assist. Mr. Jam, uh, the president normally tell them, call Omar and give it to him. Yankuba didn't know me. And he said, call Omar Malak, we we'll give him this political because we need it in the next two months. And, to and, and, he's, the only and he's the only guy who can do it. So, uh, Yankuba said he didn't know me. The former secretary general, he said, I know, I'll call him. He called me tonight, I said, go and see Yankuba. I went there in the morning. Are you Omar Malak? I said, yes. I said, come. He said, what the president? President trust you there. <laughs> what he was saying yesterday about you? I said, well, he took me there. I did the job before time, before election. He's finished. He said, okay, go to my second. Then please go to my So some people do say, ah, but I wonder this. They don't know me. They heard about Omar Malak. He said, but the president have trust on you there. When we met in the meeting, he said, Omar Malak, when he said five, he's five. This is why 22 years of Jame Sierra, I have no problem with it. Yeah, because you deliver as expected. I deliver as expected. And I first tell him, look, I will never lie to you. And I will never do a bad thing. And he has seen it until he left this country. Musabara also met, I met him when he was at Fajara. Okay. We pray together. Because, you know, they, 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 they make some maintenance there. Fence. I, 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 I increase the fence, okay. and then where water is, I roof that uh, waters, uh, water tanks, and also the, 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 the mosque, the small mosque they normally play, they ask me to change the air conditioner, which is I change, it was uh, 12,000 and I put 18,000 So, but also, we met twice, okay, we met twice. So how, how is this support your yeah, association the carpenters? Mm -hmm. I understand you have a relationship. Yes. We have a, a federation of Gambian carpenters. Before it was association, and they say association cannot be business. Mm -hmm. We have to change the name to federation. Now we are federation of Gambian carpenters. Mm -hmm. I'm the vice president. So we are trying. It's the same thing we are advocating. Government, they are giving a budget for almost $75 million every year on the furniture. We say to them, you have a skillful carpenter's here. Try to give off if government is having a contract of, uh, let's say, 100%. Let them give off 30% and see. If they give us 30%, the Federation of Gambian Carpenters, we have 30%. From that, they see what we can do. And if we do job, we can guarantee. One or two years, we give them guarantee. Because the furniture that they are buying from these shops. Yes, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. But we can give them good furniture and give them guarantee for one or two years. And if the furniture has, a, yes, I'm just saying, uh, if, the, if the furniture has a problem, we are here, we can go and maintenance. We go and buy from this outside, you come.
three months you have a problem, you come and call me. Omar, come and help me. Do you think I'm just here for repair? I'm not here just to be repairing furniture. You know? So this one we are advocating as you said of Gambia. We have been saying it. We, we went to the television, we went to the radio station, you know, we uh, we, 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 we talk, talk, talk until we, we are tired. But anyway, we are not tired. We are still continuing. Still talking, continue yes. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be continue talking. Maybe in times, time to come, maybe they will reflect back and change, try to see. Let us try this people and see. If they try us once and fin it's finished. Yeah, they, they try, they they try us once, once, it's finished. It's they will be giving us work. Yeah. Yes. And then we have more, uh, more apprenticeship, more apprenticeship. Because people, people see what is driving a very nice car. I live in a good place and I'm eating good. The boy said, you said, I want to be as Omar. Omar, Omar yes. Yeah. <laughs> he will try to focus. <laughs> How Omar live in this life, I also want to be like Omar. Let yeah. me also try. Yeah, because if Omar is a, just a captain uh -huh. and Omar is living good. Yeah. And he goes, Driving he goes, a nice car. A nice car. Yeah. Yes, everybody will like Of course. Be a of course. Yes. Because you will not be employed, you employ yourself. Yeah. So everybody wants to employ himself. It's just because of the, they don't know how. Parents must think why. Because if you have your children or your son, let him go to school. But after the school, he has to get a skill where you specialize. You know, he's supposed to specialize on something. You have been to school. What do you specialize on this? Somebody did uh, been to school. He specializes in something. Tough been to school. He specializes in construction. And he was a carpenter as me. Tough trained as a carpenter from his uncle. From the school, high school, and then he went to into construction. I did the construction, I, I did the carpentry, I went to the construction. But you have to specialize on school. Or when you are going to school, you take books. From the school, if you want to be a carpenter, from the school, the days you don't go to school, Saturday, uh, Saturday and the weekend days. From there, you will coming up, coming up. Before you finish your high school, then you are some carpenter, plumber as well, welding as well, masonist as well. It's a skill. So I think the advice should go to parents. Let them try to, you know, uh, nurture their children on skills, whatever skill it is. Let them do it. You cannot say, I, I, I'm, I been to school. 12, you don't know nothing. You come and say, start drinking a tire. Government didn't do this, government didn't do that. Criticizing government. You have to criticize yourself. Because you, yeah, what do you do? But I don't blame them. Government, they must be blamed because government should have an incentive, a program for the, for the, young. for the youngs. For instance, here, yeah, if I have 10, 20 kids to train them, at the end of the day, when your shoes has a problem, you want to buy, you come to Oman. If you are sick, you come to Oman. And I'm not getting contract from the government. I, it cannot be sustained. Government should try to get incentive for the children, or for the youth, or for the kids. Put it aside. That if Omar, you have 20 kids, then this, is, this amount is for them. At the end of the bonds, take this, let's say 2,000, 2,500 gift each year for the boys. And you promise them when you, uh, if you acquire the skills, at the end of your training, we have something for you that you can start with. The, 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 the young boys, they will come and learn skills. But when you come to man, I have five boys or ten. At the end of month, even to have fish money is a problem to me. Or to have a breakfast in the morning is a problem. You think that that youngs, when they came and see that, they'll come back again. They'll run away and say, ah, these skills has no use. Because the boss himself didn't have his money. The boss himself didn't even have breakfast. <laughs> so why should I have to bother and then waste my time? Guys? So government should do something about this apprenticeship. Apprenticeship, they should go to the big workshop and say, look, OK, take people for trainees. But we'll have a budget for you, for the boys. Follow. 
if you give, let's say you give me Omar, you give Omar about hundred thousand, and say maybe okay three months. Monitor and see how Omar, how did he spend that hundred thousand on three hundred thousand on kids or hundred thousand on kids? You monitor it. You'll say it. At the end of month, they say this is what I spent to this. Anybody you know, I give him them, let him write the name and sign. You understand? So at the end of the day, you see many youngs they'll venture in the streets. So maybe in, two, in five years or ten years, Gambia will not go to Senegal to look for his skills. It's no, there's no money in carpentry because for right now, you have so many carpenters they don't know good finishing, and they call themselves their carpenter. So if you don't know, they said you go to them and say, this bed. Let's say twenty-five thousand, and you came to Omar Omar said thirty-five thousand. Yeah, I saw the baby. What's not been said? If you know the job and you stand, you look at it properly. You know this is really, really it's not a good thing. And if you look at mine, you know no, definitely this is a standard. So the price cannot be the same. So construction, there's a money in construction. Really, there's a money in construction if you know how to do it. Yes, if you know how to charge. And you know how to fast turn the job because what when they give you make it faster. If the job delay, then you lose because the material are increasing every day. You understand? So if they give you a, a work for six months and then it take it for uh, it took you for one year, you have nothing. You end up losing. Yeah, yeah. This is why a lot of contractors their compound is at stake at the bank. Now, I mean, this skills almost about forty years. Um, really, really, my intention is to retire. Okay. And uh, before I retire, I think I have to transfer knowledge to the youngers. So I have some people here I'm training, and I train some people also now they are working on their own. Uh, you know, they are working on their own now, and I still have some people here working with me, whom I train since their childhood, and I'm getting new people to training. But sooner or later, I want to retire. Yes, and leave them. You know, get this job. You cannot continue working until until your lifetime. It's really difficult. There must be a certain time or certain age. You have to reduce your activities and leave it to the others to work. That's that's my plan. What I'm planning also to say before I leave and I'll make a proper setup. Those who can continue. In construction side, I have my nephew. He's on that side and then he's trying to do well. I'm training him. Here also, I have my younger brother and my nephew also here with my uh, other guys whom I train. So I will leave them here with them so that let them continue. Because they know they have been here for almost 20, 20 something years with me here. And then I'm paying them salary. So if I am going to retire, those people, they will maintain here and continue until if you get your own, if you get your chance and then be on your own, you can still go on your own. But as long as I am concerned, uh, I want to maintain them. If I'm retired, I'll tell my other guys to, to continue with them.